five? Mm -hmm. What time is it? Oh, okay. We got we're, time, we're in good we? shape. All right. So now that we have been sitting here <laughs> visiting <laughs> for a while, Timo, I've, I've been looking forward to meeting you truly because uh, I'll be real honest with you, um, I'm not that heavy into rock, but all the things that I've been able to find out in researching this story about you has made me tremendously eager to talk with you. First of all, I, you're getting such rave reviews right now uh, from coast to coast, from LA to New York. And I, I just, and you've been in the music business altogether how many years? Uh, it's from about since 64, something like that. It's 1964 to 65. How many years is that? 12 years? 15 years? I can't add. So, T Bone, all these fantastic reviews, how are you reacting to this? I'm, I'm really thankful for the opportunity to start working. I really want to, I want to start working hard every day. I've been sort of living off the gravy for 15 years, you know, taking it pretty easy. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I just decided to start performing. And I was always terrified of performing because I, I think I viewed the audience as a lynch mob or something. You know, but I, had a, I had an antagonism towards them. And I finally decided that was just nonsense. I would get up and start playing and play music for people, you know, which is what perf you know, musicians do. And I've actually, to my surprise, I was quite good at it. You know? <laughs> and it was, a, and it's a great deal of fun. And I want to continue, you know, I just want to continue doing it every chance I get. And I think the reviews have started coming in because I have started performing because records are so impersonal. You know, they're just reproductions, and you can get them, but it's very, it's a very abstract relationship with the audience or for the audience with the performer. And to have the chance to just get out on, on a one-to-one -one basis is, is thrilling, really. Trapdoor is apt to be, because of the reviews, it's going to attract a lot of attention and good stuff, and people are going to buy it. And it, it, it's, actually, it, it's selling, actually. And <laughs> so it has, it has the potential even to be number one, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sure. I don't think it will be. You know, it's a it's a dark horse. I think I think it's clearing away a lot of ground, but sure it has that potential. They're releasing a single the first week in October, which is Hold On Tight. All right. So then that is going to push you even more into the limelight. Success and fame is just around the corner, most people are saying. Does that frighten you at all? Well, uh I'll probably just crack, <laughs> go to Puerto Vallarta, take the money and run. I, no, I don't know. I've seen, I have had the fortune or the, uh, as, as you know, Providence would have it, I've, I've worked with a lot of very famous people and I've seen a lot of people uh, from complete uh, unknowns become household words and I've seen it is it's a, it is a tremendous strain and I've seen people start taking a lot of drugs and oh you know the whole the whole National Enquirer scenario but uh, I hope I don't do that I don't want to do that you know, well I, that's one of those bridges you have to cross when you come to it do you think you'll be able to cope with this kind of fame I hope so. I mean, I hope I could just keep it as, as you said, just a lot of work and you know, show up every day and do my job the best way I can. I mean, but still, I mean, to say I would be able to handle it would probably be the kiss of death. You know, the first show of, the first royalty check, I would probably go out and <laughs> buy a Learjet and crash it or something. Oh, let's hope not. <laughs> I mean, buy the Learjet, but don't crash okay. it. <laughs> Whatever, whatever makes you happy. <laughs> um, do you call yourself a born again Christian? No, I just I say I'm an Episcopalian. You know, I went to a church, or I go, still go to a church in California that I think is part of the evangelical Christian movement. But I'm I'm more conservative or more liberal. I I never can figure out which than that really. I, so much of born again Christian. I mean, born again Christian is really redundant to 
to the older people I know who are Christians, they say, well, of course, you know, when they heard the word born again Christian, they went, of course, you know. And so much of it is a media term that I sort of prefer to stay away from. Uh, I try to put my my beliefs and my feelings about things in my songs and not talk down to people and not preach to people necessarily. I mean, everybody preaches. They're, you know, people preach sex and drugs or people preach get loose or, you know, I mean, one preaches by the way he sits, I think. So it's, in that sense, it's difficult not to, it's difficult to say nothing, you know, which a lot of people, a lot of artists claim they do these days. But, uh, it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't help to get bookings, say, for instance, you know, if you call up on the club owner and say, okay, this guy's a born-again Christian, they, you know, they would just go, well, great, what does he sound like? You know? So I try to, I mean, I do, it is my work, and I try to uh, just appro approach it as a job. T-Bone, what are you trying to do with your music and your lyrics? Are you trying to provide some kind of balance for the people who are promoting the drug culture and that lifestyle? Well, I think there's so many, sure, yeah. There's so many people saying that. I mean, there's that, that's an overwhelming monolithic point of view. And for one thing, the world doesn't need any more people to say that. There are enough people saying it already. And I think when one looks back through the history of art, you can see times when people wanted a point of view and when they didn't want a point of view. You know, in, in Rembrandt's time, for instance, you know, he, he started out painting real ideal, uh, idealized paintings of, of the royalty, you know. And then he started taking a little harder look at things, and they just they shoved him into a Jewish ghetto for the end of his life. They took everything away from him because they didn't really want to see the truth. Or they didn't want to take a hard look at things. And these days, times are so tough. I think people are, are actually are beginning to welcome a point of view. You know, which, for I mean, I mean, in my life, I, in the and throughout the 1970s, people really didn't want a point of view at all. They just wanted to, well, you know, the 60s were horrible. Let's just kick back, relax, not worry about anything, turn our minds off. But somewhere around the middle of the decade, that started changing. And now I get kids coming up to me on the street, you know, like 18, 19 year old kids saying, "Are you T Bone Burnett?" And I'd say, "Yes, I am." Yes, I guess. <laughs> Well, you're, I have to tell you, your records are great. And they're frightening, but you're at least saying something. They frighten me, but you're saying something. And I really, you know, I, I appreciate it. And I think people are, yeah, I think people are beginning to want and need that, need a, just to look at things. Why do they say they're frightening? What do you think they mean by that? Oh, I think I, I, part of what I try to do probably is try to frighten people a little bit, you know, go boo. <laughs> <laughs> Frighten them about the future or the state of the world, or no, actually, not not frighten them so much. But I am, I am trying to. I'm trying to say it's so, okay. You know, part of what I'm saying is, look, there are people. There are forces all over the world, people and and technological forces that are trying to force you out of feeling anything. You know and that it's okay to feel. I mean, p there's so much pain in life today that people don't want to feel the pain, and so they shut off their feelings. But then they then that cuts them off from love and joy. And it's very dehumanizing. And a lot of what I'm talking about is the whole dehumanizing aspect of my modern life, the age of enlightenment. You know. So I think, you know, the, a, a lot of the reviews have mentioned the word cautionary. That I write cautionary tales, and I think that's probably what they mean. Were you involved at all in getting Bob Dylan interested in religion? Not to my knowledge. You know, that was a, that was another one of those uh, that that somehow got reported in the international press. But really, the the really interesting story there is that we were on a tour together called the Rolling Thunder Review, and about. Well over half the performers on that tour have become Christians since the tour, and Dylan being one of them. But God only knows how that happened. And I, to my knowledge, I wasn't instrumental at all. And, and there again, that's another one of those things if you call up a club owner and say, well, this is the guy that was instrumental in bringing Bob Dylan to 
church. They go, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Another blow to the music industry. <laughs> but can he play a guitar? Can he yeah, sing? <laughs> right. You know. Uh, all right. Um, stop down just a second. Let me regroup here and see what we for one. I think more. you're doing great. Um, well, I'm really into this story. I, I, I've got to tell you. Yeah, you, are. you know, I'm really into it. I'm sh I'm shocked. Um, <laughs> all right. We're rolling. Yep. Okay. Do you feel at all uncomfortable in the rock world where so many people are drug users? Uh, I just, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I try to just deal with it. I try to treat the people like, you know, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. You know, I was involved with drugs myself in the olden times, as my daughter says, and uh, I don't feel like I'm any better than those people. If I were to, if I were to, somehow come down on them, I would just be condemning myself. You know? So I just try to, I try to not take them, and let that say everything I have to say about the subject. You know? And you know, and I get because you know because people take d drugs doesn't make them a bad person. You know? I mean, drugs are more of a symptom of a problem than the problem itself. I think. What happened in your life that said to you, okay, T-Bone, enough of this drug stuff? Now? I just couldn't, you know, I, uh, one night, uh, I took one puff off a marijuana cigarette and, <clears throat> and had an anxiety attack that laid me up for two days. And I said, this is it, you know, I don't, <laughs> forget this, whatever this is. Because, you know, I, uh, it was too painful for, you know, it, it all started out as a very pleasurable thing, but this I had this one night, and I'd never had an anxiety attack smoking marijuana before. I'd always uh, you know, thought it, it had inspired me and whatnot. I thought it was, you know, I thought it was necessary for my writing and to play music. As it turns out, my writing's gotten about a hundred times more clear since I quit, which was a surprise, and I found that. A lot of my friends, Warren Zevon and Bobby Newerth, and uh, oh well, hundreds of them in the last in the last few years have just quit drinking, quit taking drugs, quit all of it because we were all burning the candle at both ends for years, and uh, it, it, it was a mutual insecurity that we would just stop, we would dry up, and everyone said the same thing basically that it's not true. That finally, I'm starting to write. You know, First time. I still smoke cigarettes, which is probably the worst drug of all. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever into anything heavier than stronger than marijuana? Oh well, this this is my hometown. My mom's gonna watch this. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, t I kind of dabbled around here and there. I was never a, a heroin addict. Or anything like that. I never was shooting drugs or anything. But yeah, I was. I mean, uh, you know, I've been involved in the in that world for all my for ever since I can you know, basically remember. So yeah, I mean, it, it just rubs off on you. And you know, and I'm as weak as the next person, or weaker maybe. I mean. Did you give up drugs because of your two daughters? No, I got rid of drugs before that. I got, I stopped. I haven't taken any drugs for about six years or seven years, something like that. No, but that would be a good reason. You have kids and you don't. You think, gosh, I don't want these little children taking drugs. Well, T Bone, I want to keep in touch with you, truly. Let's do it. And um, I've enjoyed this, and um, we'll talk when the record hits number one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. It'll probably be sooner than you think. I hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now you can talk, but just keep looking at, yeah, just the way you're looking now is fine. Okay, and I have to listen. So tell me anything. We're not recording sound. So okay. just. Well, I'll tell you the funniest thing. I met Chris one morning. <laughs> 